Where would we be without bees? Wow. You know, I know there's a lot of people who are afraid of them. Some of them are allergic to their stings and, and deadly allergic. But where would we be without them? Where would, be, where would we be without their honey, without the pollination that they do in helping to proliferate flowers and plants around the world? I don't want to find out. What in the world? Ooh, there's a lot of bee action going on over here. I have to put my whole bee suit on to see what's up. Wow, wow, wow. Beekeeping has its origin in Egypt, the cradle of civilization. Hieroglyphs show the importance of bees and beekeeping in Egyptian life. Bees were the symbol of the king in Lower Egypt, and they were thought to be the tears of the sun god Ra. When Ra wept, the story goes, his tears fell from the sky and transformed into honeybees when they touched the earth. These tears provided Ra's followers with liquid gold. In other words, honey. Egyptians made hives out of mud and clay from the Nile River. The beehives were constructed in tubes and stacked on top of each other in the apiary. Using specially designed boats, Egyptians carried the hives up and down the Nile River to pollinate the flowers and crops that grew there. When the flowers and crops died, the Egyptians would move the hives to another location a few miles away. This tradition continues on to today. Bees continue to be an important part of not only life in Egypt, but to life around the globe. This is Zambia in Central Africa. Doesn't that bee wedge in the tree look similar to ancient Egyptian hives? In the United States, there are anywhere from 115 to 125,000 beekeepers and per capita consumption of honey is approximately 1.51 pounds per year. Businesses in this industry manage and still sell bees to extract honey as well as other related products such as raw jelly, beeswax, pollen, venom and many others. Black beekeepers make up small portion of the total number of beekeepers globally and locally. Black women beekeepers are even smaller portion of the beekeeping community. However, more and more beekeepers are women, black, Latina, and indigenous people of color. The connection of black and brown people to bees and beekeeping makes sense in the same way that our connection to nature itself makes sense. If we are to increase our collective health and food access in our communities, we must have more environmental scientists, activists, teachers, farmers, and yes, beekeepers, and especially more beekeepers of color and more women. Beekeepers Nakaya Ellis Chavis and Holly Freeman have taken up the mantle and they are beekeeping while black. Their goal is to preserve the sanctity of beekeeping and to share their knowledge of bees and beekeeping with others. I have been uh, interested in having beehives for a, for a bunch of years and, um, and I just couldn't figure out how to get started. And when I talked about it at work, there were just all these naysayers, um, like all these reasons why a beehive wouldn't work. And um, so it just kind of stayed in the back of my mind. And then one day I called Kaya to go over to her farm to just talk to her. I'm just so interested in her as a black female farmer, black woman farmer, because it just brought back uh, memories of me being with my grandma and my grandpa on the farm. 
and when I went over there to visit her, uh, I noticed she had beehives, and I was like, oh my gosh, you're beehives, and she took me over there and showed me a little bit of the of what she does as a beekeeper, and I like basically begged her to take me on as an apprentice, and so <laughs> I work with I work with you for a whole for uh, for a while just being an apprentice mm -hmm. um the whole beekeeper season. yeah the whole season so entering a new space i realized that there weren't a lot of black beekeepers so um we are too uh, <laughs> a small population um which also makes it even more important right mm -hmm. that we continue to do this and that we um help others get into this space too so um, being a black beekeeper, when I first started off, I was doing a little bit of research and I, I found where um, in Egypt, um, they were beekeeping in Africa long before they were ever doing that here in the States. So, um, you know, passing this along and, and understanding that our ancestors were doing this even before we, we were, is super important. Yeah, I agree. And, and um, Definitely, we're one of the few. I don't know any other Black women beekeepers, mm -hmm. and um, and we do know. I do know a couple of Black couple males. Of yeah, a mm -hmm. couple of guys. Mm -hmm. And um, in my bee club, I'm one of very few Black people. Mm -hmm. I know Black women, <laughs> and I just like. And my bee club is fantastic. And I just, but mm -hmm. I just wonder, kind of, um, how do we use our ancestral knowledge? Mm -hmm. Right? How do we use our like love of nature, our environmental activism, mm -hmm. to be a role model for other Black youth? Yeah. Right? Because if they don't see people doing stuff, just like mm -hmm. I didn't see anybody look like me, right. beekeeping, mm -hmm. until I then I was like, oh, I could actually actually do this. Mm -hmm. If others, if little ones don't see, and adults too, don't see people that look mm -hmm. like them beekeeping, or or they don't have a space opened up for them to do, to do this work, yeah, to do then it. right. And we're so, like you said, like we're so connected to the land, to crops, and um, in, in bees are. So I think that's one of the most important things about the work that we're doing and the programs that we're starting to get more people in general. We're really focusing on black and indigenous, Latino, like folks of color um, to, to like see people doing this work of being connected to nature in this way. Right. And, and that was one of the reasons why when you were like, teach me how to do this thing. Um, you didn't have to beg. <laughs> I, did, I, I felt like I was begging. I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to say no. She's going to say no. No, because, um, you know, I felt lonely in, in the work. So you have people that are like, oh, you, you're a beekeeper. I want to come out, right? Um, but when they do come out, they aren't always like, um, I don't know, I guess on the same wave frequency as, as you are. Because like you said, we are like environmental activists, right? So having somebody come out that wants to love the bees is totally different than somebody that's coming out and was like, oh, I want to see how they make honey. And right. I just want the honey, right? right. So um, I appreciate you being in space too because you have also got into those beekeeper clubs where I just did not feel a connection yeah. because it was um, majority like, yeah. you know, white people. So um, you are also getting some knowledge and skills that, you know, I have like kind of stunted myself <laughs> with just because I don't feel comfortable in those spaces. So it is really, really important for us to also be in those spaces too. But, you know, like you said, like teaching the kids. So um, that was one of the reasons why I had the kids out Micah and um, Ryan out and they loved it. They did it for two years with me. And then, you know, middle school yeah. and stuff. So, <laughs> but yeah. passing it down, giving them that opportunity um, because a lot of children don't have that at all, especially children in the black community. True, true. I was I was at an environmental film festival recently and there was no black people. Right. And I was just so mad. I was so mad about it. I was like, I know we, you know, we're out here in St. Copa Garden. We're looking at some folks in the garden right now. And I know that we are connected to the land. We're connected to pollinators. We're connected to right. trees. We're connected to the air. But, but, but where is the space for people to, for black and brown people to like get into those spaces and to really yeah. like, you know, I don't know, like to get into those spaces. And so um, beekeeping is one way that yeah. we're trying to open up that space for, for others. Mm -hmm. And the best image that we had recently, I think, 
was when we had like kids with their ears on oh, the yeah. observation mm -hmm. house listening to the frequencies, the vibrations of the bees. I just was like, they're hooked. Like they will remember that forever. Yeah, right. Because it's not a scary experience. So right. a lot of times, when you know, in our community, when we talk about bees, it's like, oh my God, you're going to get stung. So teaching them that bees aren't out here to necessarily sting you. You know, right. like, uh, it's a defense mechanism. Right. I mean, like, they're out here to survive themselves. It's all about respect. Right. Right. Mutual respect. <laughs> right? They're just trying to live. Yeah. And it's so important for our survival. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm glad we're doing this together, and um, we're gonna go check some beehives. Yep. Kaya has six hives. Six, yeah, six new hives to check six out. Six new so. hives. So come out to Tenkofa Garden and uh, mm -hmm. check out the beehive of City Bees, mm -hmm. and um, I have three in um, Chesterfield, mm -hmm. and so um, and we want to open up the space for more folks to come and yep. see what beekeeping is, is all about. Yes. All right. All right. All right. <laughs>
My name is Jalen. I'm nine years old. Okay, so what do you know about bees? Yeah, y'all know them black. Yep. What else? They sting. People. Yep. They fly around in nature. Exactly. What do you want to know about bees, or what are you curious about? Uh, how do they grow those things? Uh, those things that you sting people with? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. All right, cool. Thank you. Anything else? No. Okay, thank you. My name is Jaden. My age is nine. And if we didn't have bees, then all living matter would die because they pollinate what like if bees weren't here then we wouldn't have apples fruit vegetables hmm, and all these other stuff so my question is about bees how do they like form because like i know there's a queen bee she lays the eggs what are the eggs That's a great question. So my name is Nini, Nini Love. Um, and I was just saying that earlier, my uh, youngest son and I, we were sitting amongst the bees. And you know, with the springtime in full bloom right now, I was just thinking about how beautiful it is that all these little parts in, in nature work together to, um, to create this abundance, right? Um, and so we were there was like a big mama bee and there was just all these other bees and we were just sitting amongst them and they were doing their thing and we were just watching um, and I was telling Saban that the bees are pollinating um, so that we can have the flowers and all of the beautiful things that we love about spring and summertime. And what question, that's beautiful, thank you for sharing <laughs> that. What questions do you have about bees? questions do I have about bees? I don't know. Oh, what are you curious bees? about? So one thing I can think of is like, ah, no. I was going to say, where do bees go in the winter time? But I feel like they're still around. Even if we don't see them, they're like, they're still somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, what question? I don't know if I have any particular questions. Maybe it's just the way they communicate. Oh, like yeah. how they communicate, right? Um, I think that would be my only question. Cool, yeah. cool. Hey, I'm Kaya. I'm Holly. And we are City Bees. I got my love of beekeeping from Kaya. And so now we're bringing our experiences to you. Thank you. We're so excited to get to give you a tour of the hive. And we look forward to working with you guys. Sign up on Eventbrite for our special apiary adventure. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. Peace. For more information about bees, beekeeping, or to visit Kai and Holly in their apiary, sign up for City Bees, a co-curated experience where you can get to be a beekeeper for a day or maybe for a lifetime.